An effective anti-air network will be very dependent on the battlefield situations, player skill, and enemy strengths. Anti-air is a primarily defensive play, and so this guide will focus on the static uses of anti-air. However, a lot of these vehicles and units will have a mobile function as well. Tactics. There are two primary weapon systems. There is a third type, but more on that later. Raider guided systems will track a target through a laser. With that target pinpointed, the munitions will be deployed against the target. This makes radar guided systems highly accurate, as well as very long range. The downside is that enemy planes can track this laser to its source. The kind of enemy weapon that does this is the SEAD fighter, often referred to as SEED, and has the tag anti-radar in armory. This will make your radar guided weapons highly vulnerable. To trick an SEAD plane, turn off your radar guided systems by left clicking on the radar guided weapon. This will not allow the radar weapon to fire, but it will also be invisible to the SEAD fighter. Once an enemy plane is no longer facing forward, you can turn it back on and get an easy hit on them. However, if they send out an SEAD fighter and bombers in tandem, you will lose this anti-air vehicle regardless. Infrared systems track heat signatures of their targets. Infrared systems are far less accurate and have much lower range. Their advantage is that SEAD planes will not be able to deploy against them. The SACLO system, sometimes called MCLOS, is used in a few anti-air systems. It is not easy to kill like radar, but it has one problem. The Saclos system's attacks can only hit a target it can see. Once it moves out of your vision range, the missile will fizzle out and land in a random location. A large number of anti-air systems will have the tag on the side that reads FNF. This stands for Fire and Forget. Functionally, FNF means a unit can fire more than one missile at a time. Non-FNF systems will only fire a second missile once the first one has hit its target. Vehicles with fire and forget systems will do substantially more damage per second than those without. However, since they are launching so many missiles so fast, they need to be resupplied far more often. Manpads is short for Man Portable Air Defense System. It is essentially a G.I. Joe with a rocket launcher on his back. Man pads are the only anti-air type that is safe to deploy to the front lines. When placed in a town, they gain bonus resistance to damage. They can and are most often deployed on mountain areas and forests. All man pads carry infrared weapons. This of course means they have a short range. However, a plane that fires over a man pad is going to get hit. Helicopters are going to be very easy targets for these units. Man pads should never be grouped with your army. They are very vulnerable to artillery and napalm. Anything targeting a more visible unit will demolish your man pads. They are, however, insanely cheap and very cost effective and supply efficient. Their biggest weakness is mobility. Once deployed, they move very slowly. It means once you've burnt through all of your anti air missiles, it will take a long time to resupply them if they have to walk. In German, it would be referred to as Flak. These have been deployed since World War II with the goal of spreading the sky with so much gunfire in hopes of hitting one of the many planes in the sky. This is still the same philosophy of the anti-air artillery. 
They are fast shooting weapons that are primarily used to deal with helicopters. They can deal some damage to airplanes, but not nearly as much as missile based systems. The anti air artillery, often simply called AAA, is the only anti air system that can hit ground and air, other than the ADATs, of course, which is rather niche. They do not deal terribly high amounts of damage to infantry, but in a firefight, having that extra firepower can most definitely help. However, the default AI, that is artificial intelligence, does have it preferentially fire on air units rather than ground. One of the main problems with the AAA is that they will reveal themselves for longer periods than other types. This makes them far more vulnerable to missile attacks from more targets. As well, the AAA are radar based. This means SEAD bombers will be able to very easily destroy them if radar weapons are left on. Much like man pads, AAA are often very cheap. Some vehicles like the Tunguska have the anti-air artillery system and infrared. Many of these hybrids will require you to turn off one weapon to fire the other. If you deploy too many anti-air units, you will have a very weak front and be very vulnerable to tank and vehicle pushes. If you do not have enough anti-air, you will become vulnerable to air attacks. Having an effective anti-air network means mixing in cheap anti-air units with expensive ones to get the best bang for your buck. This guide won't be talking about air superiority fighters as that is another topic altogether, but air superiority fighters can be used in an effective anti-air strategy. Generally speaking, infrared based weapons should be closer to the front. Their shorter range makes them less useful in dealing with planes, however they can be used to stop helicopter skirmishing. They are also a low cost investment, which means losing them is not nearly as bad as a more expensive radar guided system. So obviously radar weapons should be at the back of your anti-air network. They cover far more ground and thus do not need to be at the front. With this setup, if an SEAD bomber is moving in to try and pick off radar weapons, the infrareds can take them out. Mix in a few infantry in some mountains, some forests, and some towns, and having your AAA up front, you have yourself an insanely effective anti-air network.